Welcome to a tutorial video on Twine. In this video, I'm going to show an extended example of working with the button macro within Harlow 3.3. So now that we've been introduced to the button macro, we understand how it allows us to layer macro functionality. Because the button macro works with links, or any macros that produce links, we can put a macro inside of a macro inside of a macro. And in some cases, even more in depth. But at least in this example, I'm going to show something that I demonstrated as part of the introduction to the button macro. That is, any macros that produce links can be used with the button macro, with corresponding hooks inside each corresponding macro. So let's look at this extended example. So the first thing I'm doing is setting up two variables. Notice I'm collapsing the white space. So this allows us to position things however we want, understanding that all of the lines that would have been produced from the macros will be collapsed back down. Then I'm showing something that we saw with the introduction to the button macro that I'm now expanding on. So we have a set macro right here, which is changing the value of the variable. This first line is increasing, second one is decreasing which is then set up with link rerun, which will produce a link, which is inside the hook that's associated with the button macro right here. So it's going to appear as a button, but inside will be three layers of different macros. The same down here for the sushi area, where we've got plus and minus, plus and minus. Notice set inside rerun, inside button. And then finally, we can see the order right here, allowing us to use the asterisk to create a bulleted list for rice and sushi. So let's go ahead and run this and then I'll talk through it again. So notice the visual presentations simpler here. So instead of potentially using sequence or potentially using cycle, we can also use buttons. And all of these are valid options, but they all come with knowledge of how to use them. So in this case, because we're using buttons and because we're using link rerun, which again produces a link, then I can change these orders right here and see order. Okay, one fried rice, one sushi. So let's decrease that, see it again, fried rice and sushi. Now I didn't put any pretext in here, so we could go even lower into negative numbers, which would be very silly for ordering food, but the idea is the same. And if we wanted to check that, all we would need to do is add some additional if macros in there to just check to make sure it's never, it's never below zero. But the importance of this example, and the reason why I limit it to one passage, is again point to the importance of understanding how we can start to mix in different macro functionality altogether. So understanding the button macro works with a link, and other macros produce links, allows us to start putting all of these things together. So potentially then, if I wanted to check to make sure that this equal never went below zero, then I could put even more code inside this hook right here, inside the link rerun, knowing that it wouldn't create any more lines because any lines it would have created would be nullified by the link, which would be overwritten by the button anyway. So one of the things to start to realize is again, our code can get much more complicated as we start to put macros inside macros inside macros, but all of which build on ideas we've already seen. In many cases, as we use macros, the macros attach the hooks. Inside those hooks could be much more code. As in this example right here, we've got a macro inside of a macro inside of a macro. And potentially, I could even use the display macro to include the contents of another passage right here, which might include the contents of another passage, which might include the contents of another passage. So our code can get pretty complex very, very quickly. But again, thinking through, like this extended example, understanding how macros work with each other, what they produce. Link rerun produces a link, which works with the button macro to change that link into a button and understanding as we move into thinking about what these macros produce, do they produce links or changers or commands, topics we'll get to in future videos, starting to think through how we combine all of the concepts we know about macros in different ways, layering them in different ways, and building on our existing knowledge of everything we know about Harlow. Things like bulleted items, collapsing white space, to create more complicated stories and projects, but all building on the simple foundational concepts we've now seen across this video series, across other, other videos, building it all together and allowing us to really expand what we can build within Harlow 3.3. Thanks for watching.